Welcome to another Electronics on the Floor, where I'll talk about variable resistors or potentiometers, most familiar as volume controls for radios and amplifiers, they've got many other uses besides. And in your electronic salvaging, you'll find many different types. I'll explain those and talk about some tricks and differences that can make them even more useful for your projects. In this bin are the larger type, often from valve or earlier solid state gear. And then as technology advanced, the potentiometers got smaller to something like this. This is a two gang potentiometer. It was commonly used in stereo amplifiers where one section was for the left channel, the other section for the right channel, both controllable from the same knob. This is very similar, except on the back, there's two extra terminals, which is normally for an on off switch. This one is only a single gang potentiometer, but with the on off switch on the back, there's four terminals that might have been so that active and neutral could be switched. That's safer if you're using high voltages, such as if you're switching the mains in a valve, amplifier or receiver. This is just an ordinary single potentiometer, arranged a bit differently including a mounting bracket so that its side can be varied rather than turning a knob. This was popular in the 1970s or thereabouts. This is a real gem, a Helipot 10 turn pot by Beckman, commonly used in test instruments where you had to make really fine adjustments. It's also great for use as a tuning control, especially in transceivers where you're using a Veractor diode to control the frequency. In that case, you add a 10 turn pot and that gives you much easier tuning as the whole range is spread over the 10 turns rather than the three quarter turn of a standard potentiometer. The only problem with that is you need to find some way of making a frequency readout. You can possibly do that by using one of the cheap frequency counters you can get on eBay. This is an interesting control, three functions. There's actually two knobs and three functions. One of the knobs, which is connected to one of the potentiometers and the on-off switch on the rear, might be, say, your on-off volume control, while the other could be a tone control. Something like this would have been used in something like a car radio or other application where you've got very limited front panel space and you want the controls to do several things at once. This is a preset potentiometer or trim pot, these days a lot smaller. Here's another gem, even with the manufacturer's name and address on them. I looked up that address, it's not very far from here, and the old building still seems to be there. It's 50,000 ohms, and I haven't checked the insides, but it could possibly be a wire round potentiometer. I haven't mentioned wire round potentiometers so far, but they are basically useful for high power applications. Normally with potentiometers, you're only passing a small signal. It just could be some audio or a DC voltage that's not very many milliamps, but with wire round potentiometers, you can handle a lot more power. So that could be useful for some applications, particularly involving power supplies or similar. This is another trim pot, an open air type. Most of them now are closed in. So far I've discussed potentiometers that look a bit differently from one another or might have a different number of gangs in them. But apart from their differences in their resistor values, there is another thing that's also very important. That is whether they are linear or logarithmic in their adjustments. To prove that it's linear, what you do is you find the center travel of the knob. In this case, it goes from there around to here and you just put it in the middle and then you measure the resistance from the wiper or common to either end in turn. And if it is linear, in other words, if the control is halfway there, then your resistance should also be half, i.e. if it's 10K from here to here, because this is both ends of the fixed part of the potentiometer, it should be 5K between the middle and either of the ends. Just having a look, first of all, we'll test the resistance from 
end to end. It's rated at 10k, but here it says 8k. Now we'll put one probe in the middle and at one end it says 7.28 and the other less than one. So this is definitely not a linear potentiometer. If you prefer to see things graphically, imagine this as being your rotation of your potentiometer. That's 100% from the minimum setting and this is at the minimum setting. This is 100% of your resistance value and this is 0%. That's the halfway point, we'll call that 50%. Now, if it was truly linear, then 100% would apply to 100%, 50%, 50%, and 0, 0%. So the curve would be like that, a straight line. You adjust the potentiometer to 50% of its rotation, and it's at 50% of its total resistance value, i.e. it would be the same resistance from the center lug to either of the end lugs. There are some different nonlinear tapers. The most common example is the volume control that I discussed before. And here you might be having a much slower change in resistance in the early part of the rotation. And then the change is all compressed towards the end. The benefit of that, as I mentioned before, is you get a slower change in volume right at the bottom end because you want to be able to finally adjust the volume without it being too finicky. That is a log, the straight line is a linear. There is also another one, I think it's called a reverse log or inverse log, that's a bit different. In other words, there's a big change right at the bottom end, but at the top end the change is much less. You can often tell whether a potentiometer is linear or logarithmic by looking for a lettered code on the back near where the value is printed. Other places where the value may be printed are on the front, just up here, down here near the terminals or around the side. This one is 250k and the letter A means it's an A taper or logarithmic such as you'd have in a volume control. This one says B 100k. The B means it should be linear, like the straight line shown on the graph. So this is our A 250k. Hopefully you can see the read. This is our A 250k, fully counterclockwise, zero ohm fully clockwise, near enough to 250k. In our halfway position, it's only 32k, which means it's definitely very nonlinear, which correlates with what it says on the back, being an A or logarithmic taper. Now, what if you want to convert a linear potentiometer to one that's nonlinear, or even the reverse? to make a log potentiometer a bit more linear. What you can do is you can just put a resistor across from the center pins to one of the outer pins, depending on which one will affect its characteristic. Why would you do something like this? First of all, you might want a volume control type characteristic, but you only have a linear potentiometer. Or in another case, let's say you've got a tuning control for a transceiver that is actually controlling a varactor diode or similar, and you might want part of the band to spread out, either because the tuning of the varactor diode might be nonlinear in itself, for instance, it might be controlling a variable crystal oscillator, or you might wish to pull the CW end of the band out over more of the dial if your interest is more CW. You can do that by changing the taper of the tuning potentiometer and an easy way to do that is to put a resistor value from the center pin to one of the sides. I suggest you do that by experiment. Just try a random bunch of resistors 
try something as a starting point around the resistance of the potentiometer itself and experiment with different resistor values and then you'll be able to vary the slope, linearity or otherwise of your resistance versus rotation. This has been an electronics on the floor. We've discussed potentiometers, the different types and their different uses. Salvage or buy a few, get some resistors and see what they can do for you.